Hi, welcome to everyone's favourite segment, Mailbag Monday. Yes, I've taken a couple of weeks off from it, back into it. Got a lot of stuff to go through. Let's go. This one has been uh, here an embarrassingly long time, so sorry, uh, Wong Si Ming from Singapore. Hi to all my Singapore, Singaporean viewers. I do like uh, Singapore. I love Singapore. It's uh, terrific. And yes, by the way, I won't always use the big knife. If uh, <laughs> after the uh, solar cell uh, incident uh, on the previous mailbag, I think I will. Uh, if things look like they should be delicately opened, then I'll, you know, I might try and use a uh, cutter. Anyway, what do we got? We have a post-it note. Sorry about the appearance of this note. I wrote it in the post office and I was, it's all I could find. No worries. I have sent. Well, let's find out. It sounds good. Here we go. Ta -da. It's a bit of kit. We always love a bit of kit. Got some uh, knobs and uh, things. Hey, that's nice. If he's taken the knobs off, that's very good for uh, transport. Knobs often break off in transport. Nothing worse than having your knob broken, let me tell you. Um, let's take this out. Bugger that off, and ta-da, we have a HP Universal Bridge. And by the way, this was sent in by Sai Ming. He must have had the last name first thing on the um, package. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, Sai Ming. Check this baby out. Oh, totally old school. I would have said like 1970s vintage, but according to the manual which you can I'll link in down below on the HP website which is an awesome manual by the way it's like 200 pages full schematics the whole works theory of operation for these uh, universal LCR bridges oh, fantastic anyway link down below check it out um yeah it says 1982 so <laughs> yeah there you go I've actually uh, powered it on and uh, there we go our centimeter there is uh, is deflecting and uh, we can wind her up look at that precision look at that precision brilliant and you can see that we've got a decimal point down in there which uh will change with the range here and there we go it's not that probably you have to get right down at the correct uh camera angle here to see it but the lights on there we've got some uh tr what do we got uh sense and then we've got our vernier over here for our dissipation factor and our quality factor as well and this is just old school um, analog scale look at that and then we've got fine adjustment oh yeah that's a bit it's a bit crusty needs some lube on that that's for sure and um, this um, our, our range switch seems to be out of uh, our function switch seems to be out of alignment here as you can see like it blanks out there so something internally is actually uh, wrong with that and if we go over to capacitance here of course then uh, you know our range is um, ohms so yeah that's uh, goofed up somewhat anyway um by the way if you don't know what this is it's a well it's a uh, 4260a universal bridge um but it's an lcr bridge it measures just like your regular lcr meters today except it uses the uh, wheatstone bridge uh functionality to actually do that and these things can actually be quite accurate and quite uh, precise you can do really good matching with these things um and, you know, because all the uh, really tight vernier uh, control, you know, really fine resolution vernier controls on the thing and you, yeah, you tweak it against a uh, known reference uh, capacitor, resistor or um, inductor inside the thing. And it's not too shabby at all. I love how it has the uh, symbols on there. Look at that. There we go. That's uh, series there. And we can change it. Nano, microfarads. Yep. And there we go. So that's series capacitance. And then, yeah, it's a bit out of whack. There we go. That's parallel inductance, series inductance. And uh, really, very, very old school, but I love it. So it does actually power on and do something, but uh, I'm not going to test it. Uh, Cy says it's, uh, it doesn't work uh, at all. So, um, yeah, I'll believe him. And let's take a look at the back here. One interesting thing to note is that... Um, it is uh, Yokogawa. Look at that. It's not just a, it was the um, the collaboration between uh, Yokogawa and uh, HP back in the day. They made a few uh, instruments together and uh, 
Yep, this is one of them. So it's not actually a HP uh, meter. It is from Yokogawa and it's uh, made in Japan. And no, it's probably not fair to give this thing one of my two-minute teardowns because it needs more than that. It's a uh, it's discrete transistor stuff, and you know all the vernier uh, controls and things like that. It's going to be quite nice um, inside in that respect, or maybe not nice, but it's going to be in because of the vintage of it. But it's going to be interesting inside, so I might leave that one for a full teardown. Thank you very much, Sai Ming. Now, of course, you probably wouldn't bother using one of these uh, these days. I mean, you know, we're, we're talking, like, it goes down to one picofarad and one uh, micro Henry, I think, and it's not, you know, by modern standards, modern LCR meter standards, for 100 bucks or, you know, less than 200 bucks, you can go out and buy, you know, a pretty decent handheld um, LCR meter these days. So, really, you know, if, if you've got one of these things that works, eh, Maybe you might want to use it, do some matching or something like that, but it's really, you know, it's it's way past its prime. So, you know, really, if it was um, faulty, you know, unless you were very nostalgic uh, towards it, you wouldn't bother uh, fixing something like this. Next up, we've got one from Winstead. Uh, that's not their name. That's their uh, town in uh, CT, in the US CT, Connecticut probably got that wrong. Um, anyway, let's uh, check this one out. It doesn't have a name, it's just got uh, an address, so thank you very much. You don't have to put a name on it. You can be, you can send stuff in anonymously if you uh, so desire. See, this is where the knife gets a bit unwieldy and yeah, I probably should use a, uh, a box cutter to open this stuff, but anyway, we have ourselves a note. Should I read the notes before I take it on. I don't know. After you seem to express interest in a uh, pacemaker reader, I figured out tossing my slightly aged... Oh, Thomas! Thank you very much, Thomas Dorr. Slightly aged. I won't tell you what it is. That ruins the uh, surprise here on Mailbag. I'm sure that's why everyone watches, right? You just... Surprise! Surprise! And it is a... Um, it's... A, wow! Okay, it's modern. I thought it was like going to be old. It's a uh, wireless blood pressure monitor. As in, hooks up to your phone and stuff. Whoa, awesome. Aha, uh -huh. no. Um, yeah, we were fooled. I thought this is uh, Thomas's fancy, fancy new one. And uh, no, we've got the old one in the box. It's a uh, blood pressure uh, monitor. It's exactly the same in nearly every way, but instead of using a proprietary Apple connector, the new version offers Bluetooth and allegedly standard USB connection. Well, look at these fancy, fancy packages. Jeez, guess, oh, look, a magnetic. Oh, wank. Oh, look at that. And uh, here we go. It's got one of these. Yeah, it's, that's it. That's it. Oh, that's actually really, look at that. Is that a uh, aluminium tube? Wittins brand. Blood pressure monitor. Wow. Okay. There you go. I can't test it. I can't use it because, well, I don't have an iPhone thingy. And there you go. A little end cap bar just pops up with a coin there. It's got four AA batteries to power the thing. And uh, you can see that springiness. That is, I'm putting a decent amount of force into that to open that sucker up and uh, I don't know it seems to be uh, like a uh, built decent quality and uh, I like the alloy uh, tube on there that's pretty good so yeah I think what do you think two minute tear down let's go and well there you go uh, it looks like it does have an internal uh, pump for this sucker and we've got some uh, supports here there they don't go anywhere this one here goes there is something that goes through into there but i'm not sure you know i don't think it's actually sensing anything by way of that i think it's doing all your uh, sensing through the pressure ports there so yeah let's go a bit further and i took out a couple of the uh tubes and the support there and of course this is all just going to slide out but you might wonder well how does it slide out with that cable there well the designers have thought of that if you turn it around you can see that the cable then folds into there like that and that's how they get the thing in and out very neat ta-da we're in like Flynn 
So this one's what's called an oscillatory type blood pressure meter with the vacuum pump. And we'll see how the uh, vacuum pump uh, works in a second. But here we go. I um, stole this from the British uh, Medical Journal. And there's some nice little diagrams of exactly how these things work. Now, basically what it, uh, happens is the cuff... Um, it inflates, of course, and actually restricts along your arm, and then it basically they do that until it cuts off your blood pressure completely, and then uh, they start releasing that, and then this systolic blood pressure that. Uh, that they will slowly, I don't know if it's a linear decrease or not, but they will uh, decrease it in steps uh, from completely closed and then your systolic pressure will pump blood through there and uh, in doing so, it can actually, it, set, it sets up vibrations that it can actually measure that transfer through the air and can be measured by a pressure sensor in there which we'll uh, see in a second and then once it gets down to being fully open there's no more vibrations in there and then the uh, diastolic uh, uh, pressure takes over so that's basically how these things work they're basically just a vacuum pump with a uh, pressure sensor in and that's and some smart firmware of course to handle it all but that's pretty much it Actually, I just started tearing this thing apart, and I think I will leave it uh, for a separate video. Although it's not complicated, I just want to add some uh, explanations and uh, things of how it works. So, yeah, that's best left outside the mailbag, I think. And yes, I have changed my shirt. Because, well, I might blow the illusion here, but sometimes I don't finish this on the same day that I actually record it. And that's what happened. It's now Tuesday here. So, there you go. Um, do I better finish this up and edit and get it uploaded otherwise people it won't be uh, Monday somewhere in the world anyway this one is from uh, Samuel Ferreira Marquez Lorenco sounds familiar is he having a second suck of the sav anyway he's from Portugal and uh, thank you very much and uh, let's have a look what's in here it kind of sort of opens but not really all right Yeah, I know. I shouldn't use this. Here we go. What do we got? We have a postcard from Monchiq. Is that? Yeah, Monchiq. Something like that. I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Dave, if you are planning to go to Portugal, you should visit this place. All right, I will if I ever get to Portugal. Hi to all my Portuguese viewers. And uh, we have various letters. We have more little boards. Um, these are, these are familiar. Yeah, I think he's having second suck of the sav. He's uh, set in uh, some development uh, boards before, and this one is a new one based on the 18F2450. It's called the Pick Op, and he's included some uh, stencils and the schematics and uh, all sorts of jazz, and I will link in down below if you're interested in this little puppy and he wants me to do a quick little uh, critique of the thing and well there's not much you can do here it's basically a uh, microcontroller with a jumper it's got an oscillator on the bottom there we go and uh, that's that's about all she wrote well that's not an oscillator it's actually a crystal um, the oscillator is uh, inside the microcontroller of course um, there is a difference between an oscillator, an oscillator module and just a crystal, of course. The crystal doesn't do anything on its own, whereas an oscillator module will actually output the signal directly. Anyway, not a huge amount you can uh, critique on boards like this. The only thing you would watch out for is uh, the fact that, that, you know, are there any breaks in the ground planes? Um, that kind of thing. And you'll notice that this trace, the first thing I notice is that there's no ground plane wrapping around there to join there. So... Uh, that's so that that's just got a genuine split in it. It's not like routed around, but we're not talking about any heavy currents here at all. It doesn't really matter. So you just you know I'm just uh, uh, really um, talking out my ass because there's not much you can critique on a small board like this. It looks to be he's oriented the chip correctly. It looks to be fanned out properly. Otherwise you'd have a dog of a job if you turned around the other way and just tried to uh, route the traces. If you just placed it willy nilly and then. Uh, routed the traces out, yeah, you would uh, quickly find that mm, you probably grew, uh, goofed up the uh, component placement, but there's no issues uh, there at all, really. It's pain in the ass uh, QFN package, and that's why he has uh, supplied a little um, solder paste 
stencil with this thing and we've had a look at these before these are from um osh stencils if you didn't recognize the purple board of course it's from uh osh park and um these are the mylar stencils you need some white behind there to actually see there we go little uh, mylar stencils and they do a quite a good job and they're dirt cheap of course so doing that uh, smd stuff yourself is no issue whatsoever and they send some nice little uh squidgy as well solder price spreader so you whack this on top of your board and then you put your paste on there and you go whoop like that hopefully you get it in one pass and uh, you got a reasonable amount of paste in there it's not hugely uh, controlled it's not you know as good as a real proper uh, high quality stainless steel uh, stencil but it's dirt cheap and it's great for you know short runs up to sort of you know the tens or maybe even the uh, hundreds or something like that if you're looking at the thousands you don't want a mylar stencil you definitely want a uh, stainless steel one and for those curious to see a stainless steel one, well, you can see the reflection of my scope up there. Um, this is my uh, microcurrent uh, panel, of course. I got um, some of these uh, stainless steel stencils made. This isn't the one that I use for actually producing the boards. That's at my assembler at the moment. And it's mounted in a big metal uh, frame, like a stiff frame right around here. This is just a loose uh, stencil, which they can use as well, but usually um, on a proper... Uh, solder paste dispensing machine as I've shown in a previous video they do mount them in uh, really big proper rigid uh, frames as the way to do it so you generally uh, leave that up to your uh, PCB assembler to get those uh, made for you and there's not a huge amount happening there on the schematic of course it's just a microcontroller on a board but anyway if you want one of these the pick up um, go check out Samuel's site thanks Samuel oh yes this uh, comes as a kit by the way there you go you can buy it hence the Stencils. Duh. And I don't normally do postcards anymore because people have said that, um, you know, they don't really want to see postcards, but I do uh, read them all. And uh, so please keep sending them to me. But anyway, I just wanted to show this one. It's probably not going to auto uh, focus. Anyway, it's from uh, As it's, uh, Asmara, um, which I guess is the um, capital of uh, Eritrea. I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, I'm sure, but it's a country that I've never heard of. And uh, this one comes from uh, Rickard. Uh, he's from Sweden, but apparently he's in um, Eritrea, uh, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, at the moment. Uh, he's The internet connection is so bad that it took an average of two minutes to download one single text-based email. Oh, he downloaded 3K... Three kilo, three K that's 3k bytes in one hour. Wow. I figured he could send a postcard, but have I ever received a postcard from Eritrea? No, I haven't. I haven't even heard of the place. This is awesome. Just had to look it up on Google Maps. It's, um, if you're wondering where it is, it's uh, north of Ethiopia, up on the uh, coast, up the top of Ethiopia. Who knew? Um, problem number one, it took him five days to find a postcard. Uh, the postcard was 12 years old. <laughs> awesome. Um, it was impossible to send international mail from the country. Wow. The Asmara bus station. There you go, via the Swedish postal website. So thank you very much, Rickard. That is interesting. A country I've never heard of. Brilliant. Next up, one from Anthony Perotta. Uh, he's from Malta. Brilliant. Uh, thank you very much, Anthony. Let's open this thing up. No idea what's in it. I've got some paper. I've got a header with a uh, Arduino board. Another postcard. Excellent. Uh, yeah, from Malta. There we go. Ooh, doesn't that look lovely? Beautiful. Greetings from Malta with a smiley face. Thank you very much. And a board hidden in here so we've got a couple of Arduino shields and a board and Anthony has a Tindy store which I'll link in down below and he's selling some stuff not only um, these Arduino uh, prototype uh, shields always come in handy you've got to have some of these in your kit but uh, interestingly a line scan camera let's take a look at it and if you haven't seen a line scan camera before well it's like a regular camera except it only has uh, one row so it's actually 128 pixels across by only one row high and uh, uh, for vision um, systems and things like that so uh, Anthony built this to learn uh, vision systems because the Arduino doesn't really have enough uh, processing grunt in it not your stock standard ones anyway to do any sort of decent uh, vision with a proper you know 640 by 480 camera or something like that so we want to learn about uh, 
uh, line scan camera. So you made this little board. All it is is basically a uh, breakout for this, the uh, TSL uh, 1401CL uh, linear sensor array, as they call it. And uh, it's uh, 400 dots per inch. It's 128 by 1. Uh, wide dynamic range, 72 dB dynamic range, etc., etc. It works off a single supply, and you'll notice that it's a just a uh, simple chip like that. So what it is is it's actually mounted on the board under there like that, and then this is just a big lens assembly which then uh, screws on top of that, which is pretty essential. And if you have a look at the block diagram here, it's actually got a fair bit of stuff in it. Each pixel is one of these. So there's 128, duplicated 128 times. Each pixel has its own uh, sample and hold and uh, integration op amp in there, integration capacitor and a uh, photodiode uh, sensor, of course. Each uh, photodiode is uh, 3,500 uh, microns. Uh, wide. So there you go, 128 of those. Output buffer, it's got some switching and uh, shift stuff and yeah, and that's pretty much all there is. So they're pretty easy to use and uh, no doubt he's got uh, some libraries available for it. So if you want to play around with some uh, line scan uh, camera stuff on your Arduino, then give it a go. And we're really hauling us through them. Now this one uh, comes from Dean Govermanis. People must laugh at my pronunciations, really. Um, anyway, he's from uh, Lindenhurst in New York. There you go. And um, he's from a company called Tem Products Inc. Contains electronic components and documents. I don't know. Let's open it up. Have a squeeze. Oh, has this got uh, one of the um, rip open things? Press firmly to seal. No, there we go. All right. Ta -da. Hang on. Slice across the top there. Beauty. And padded bag inside that. Terrific. And he was going to send in this, but decided to uh, probably um, express priority internet <laughs> priority mail express. Yeah, you probably pull tab to open. The tab's hidden under the. Have to use the knife to get at the tab, so I can pull it. There we go. All right, so he changed his mind at the last minute, what he'd send it in, and there's another bag. And a whole bunch of documents from Dean. He's a fan of the show, thank you very much. Lived in New York for three years ago. I um, started a company three years ago. Mailbag plus new trends. Uh, nerds will love these products. Let's have a look at their products. And Dean is sending some really interesting stuff here. Um, a bit different to our usual Arduino boards we've been getting. He started his company in New York about three years ago, designing the products and setting up manufacturing, slowly gaining traction. The biggest problem is interfacing with some of the big distributors like DigiKey and Mouser. Yeah, I can imagine. I, uh, uh, how much work? Have you got this stuff on DigiKey and Mouser yet, or are you still working on it? Um, anyway, he's got the Power Peg it makes thermal management PCB integration simple, and the parts are beautiful. They? Well, let's have a look. I'm happy to ship orders through his website, which I'll link in down below. But look at this. PowerPeg is an OEM. Here it is. Ta -da. There's the PowerPeg. Look at that. Little um, pressing metal uh, studs. Um, oh, I don't know if they're press fit. It could just be loose fit and then you screw them. I'm not sure. Anyway, um, OEM thermal connector integration for service mount components in printed circuit board assemblies. Thermal management design in SMD assemblies is often constrained by manufacturing methods. Power peg thermal connectors are easy to solder due to their low mass, large and complex. Uh, dissipators can be connected after soldering. This two-part system provides limitless possibilities for cooling. Awesome! Something a bit of out of the box thinking here. And if you have a look at, uh, there you go, down to your SMD part on the bottom through your board and you can screw it in. It gets the heat out like that. That is that is quite neat. And there's our little peg. Look at that. Isn't that cute? It's got itself a uh, threaded hole there. The thing is tiny by the way. It's absolutely tiny and uh, it would and it mounts uh, in the board as we saw and then that bottom surface uh, down there connects down on the bay on the bottom side of your uh, surface mount part. That's really quite novel. And then we've got ourselves some uh, thermal performance graphs here. It looks like with and without uh, thermal grease. So there you go. And uh, 2 degrees C per watt. Uh, typical thermal resistance junction to the dissipator. Um, and 
There's some mechanical drawings for those playing along at home. And there we go. There's the, uh, how you could possibly have it. There's your part with your uh, die pad on the bottom going through your board. And then it can solder. You can put some paste on the bottom side there and just solder it on the back side of your board. Ah, oh, really quite neat. And then you can mount them standoff like that or uh, recessed. Of course, if you want your uh, manufacturer, that'll cost extra. Um, if your manufacturer, you have to tell them to uh, part drill in uh, your board into your board like that. They can do it, um, but yeah, it's um, above and beyond your ordinary uh, board design. And they got full tape and reel packaging. It's all very professional product. I love it. Good on you, Dean. But of course, you can't just design these little uh, funky pegs like this and not sell the matching hardware to go along with it. Look at this. They've got the dissipator, which is designed to go onto the power peg. And wow, look at that. That looks really funky. I like that. And Dean said that these things are beautiful. And well, I wouldn't disagree. Look at that. Ah, oh, lovely. Oh, oh, brilliant. I want to design those into something. And here's an example of a little uh, Cree lead mounted down onto this uh, heatsink spreader. That's great. I love that. Super high quality stuff. It's great. And then it doesn't end there. He's got uh, all sorts of other uh, gadgets. This one is on uh, Shapeways. You can just order it from the Shapeways store. There's Dean. Good on you, Dean. And he's got, uh, look, this little um, retainer clip for another um, a Cree board here, and I'm, I don't know if they just sell this or it's just a demo uh, board, but they certainly, um, the retaining clip you can get from Shapeways with the heat spreader on the back. Very nice example. Ah, oh, love it. And this is neat. Check this out. Got a little demo here. So they got one of the power pegs under there attached to the bottom side of that uh, D-pack there with the heat spreader and a tiny little Sunon Maglev fan. Look at the size of that thing. It is tiny. Oh my goodness. That is just sex on a stick. And I can't resist powering this sucker up and uh, letting it burl. So here we go. It's drawing uh, 0.1 amps at 5 volts and uh, that is not making much noise at all. That is very nice. Wow, I expected it to be much uh, whinier than that, but that is very, very low noise. Incredible. And then he supplied some examples of how this thing uh, actually um, works, how you put your hole through for your uh, stud, of course. So your, your power peg just goes inside the back of that. You solder your Cree lead onto there and... Uh, you can, that's how you can get the heat out of that sucker. So that is terrific. I, huge thumbs up to this product. He started his own company three years ago just to make these little um, thermal power pegs and stuff. And geez, these are terrific. They really are. And Tim also do what's called a stepper stack integrated motion controller for stepper motors. There you go. So not just the thermal products. Hmm, let's crack that open. So this is the module itself, designed to connect up to an Arduino. I'll show you that in a second. And there we go. It's uh, uh, using the, because that has a thermal uh, pad on the bottom of that uh, stepper motor uh, driver chip. Check out all the huge, big banked uh, uh, power bank there of uh, uh, caps. Just absolutely massive, butted right up together. Jeez. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, and... Uh, it's, yeah, of course, comes out using the uh, power peg plus the spreader. And it's the Stepper Stack R5 multiple operating mode, supports passive drive, active control, up to a uh, 3.5 amp uh, output current. It's a pluggable module, of course. It's, uh, you know, designed to uh, just plug into either a breadboard or, you know, for development purposes or into your final uh, board. Digitally configurable to adapt to any stepper motor. High quality thermal management system, of course. That's what uh, Tem are specialising in here. And uh, high efficiency, overcurrent, blah, 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 blah. Digitally integrated stepper motion controller. And there we go. Arduino time. The thing I really like is that these data sheets are very professional and uh, comprehensive. Mode, passive mode of operation, jog mode, and uh, so if you're doing any sort of uh, stepper motor work and you want to do it with an Arduino, this is a really nice little solution, and yeah, very professional documentation, love it. So thank you very much, Dean, that is a great mailbag there, had some interesting uh, stuff with these uh, power pegs and everything else, and very, 
very professional solution. I love it. So if you want to check out Dean's stuff, check it out, uh, 10 products down below. I'll link it in. And there's more. Yes, look at this beautiful shiny silver box from uh, Jonas Grunhagen from uh, Germany. Um, and obsolete hardware. Hmm, we like obsolete hardware. So let's, uh, here we go. I might, look, happy. Look at that. See? Gentle. All right, does that uh, have something like that? No. Yeah. It's, yep, more silver tape. Goodness gracious. It's got lots of padding. Oh, there's something in there. Yep, you can smell it. I think there's something in there. Don't want to toss that out. We've got a tray. We've got a component tray. We've got a whole bunch of another component tray. I'm not sure why we've got. Oh. oh yeah, that's vintage hardware. That's got 70s smell. And it's dead, wrapped in plastic. Jonas has actually sent in a whole bunch of stuff here and uh, this one is actually a demonstration board for character generation made in the early 80s. Look, the, <laughs> we got, it can generate characters, you type it in and uh, bingo, it can give you your character uh, pattern and it's just got some, you know, really uh, tin plate, uh, double sided sort of, you know, homemade type uh, boards. Hmm, Raffi reminds me of Baby Beluga in the Deep Blue Sea. Texas Instruments 7404 made in England. Look at that, the old dart. And I put five volts into it, and yes, it does stuff. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing, but uh, it, it is missing the clock. There is a terminal on the back, and it says to feed in a clock there. So I have to have some sort of TTL. I'm surprised it's doing any, it's able to sort of do anything at all, but maybe that's just, you know, uh, garbage having a stray, uh, you know, a floating clock input or something like that, perhaps. And if I feed in a one kilohertz TTL clock, well, I can get it to do the odd thing, but yeah, I have no real idea what I'm doing there. Hmm. But perhaps the most interesting thing here, check out this Intel bubble memory. Yes, and it's one megabit bubble memory from... Ta-da! Made in the Philippines from uh, 1986. One megabit. So I'm wondering if I can crack that sucker open and uh, take a look inside. Might be uh, fully encapsulated. I don't know. I have no idea what this thing is on the front. Is it some sort of, you know, checksum or something like that? Got no clue. And here's a diagram of how a magnetic bubble memory um, actually, well, how it's physically uh, constructed, how it works is a bit more uh, complicated, but it basically um, stores a magnetic field in little bubbles that can move inside uh, little lines within the chip here. So there's, if this is one, and each one is like a bit, like the ferrite core memory, which we've looked at a couple of times uh, before on the mailbag, this um, it basically stores the same way in a magnetic field, one bit per, in this case, instead of a uh, toroidal ring, it stores it inside a uh, a, a little a mag a a film of magnetic material and the bubble can move um, across these things. They're showing them as sh uh, chevron propagation elements. So it can move from one to the other and then you've got magnetic fields which then can um, uh, move from one end to the other. You can read at one end and magnetize at the other and so on. So uh, <laughs> there's you know, quite a lot of physics actually going on inside these things and they were developed in the um, 1970s and by the mid 70s uh you know pretty much every major manufacturer was working on uh, magnetic bubble memories and they were all the rage they sort of this was sort of like the penultimate the intel uh one megabit to store a million bits in there they very quickly approached the uh density very early days of the magnetic core memory and then they went aha we're onto something here so and of course they're non-volatile like magnetic uh, core memory as well, except they're not a destructive uh, right, like in the magnetic core memory, but they quickly reached the density 
of the uh, toroidal core ones and surpassed it. And the penultimate one here, the one megabit uh, version, they might have gone a bit higher, but by the time this thing came around, I mean, this was 86. They were still making them in 86, but really by then, nobody was designing them into here. So this one is probably like a legacy one they were still making for systems that needed, you know, some sort of military, you know, system. They can't, you know, just spin around and use the latest technology. They've got to use um, hardened ones uh, like this. So yeah, by like the early 80s, I mean, hard drives have come out and just killed these things. Absolutely killed them. And they pretty much died overnight. And you've never heard of bubble memory ever again. There you go. But fascinating. Um, maybe I can uh, open that up and tear down. But that's certainly not for a mailbag. So thank you very much, Jonas, and to everyone else who sent in stuff into Dale's mailbag. And yes, I do have more, and I will uh, endeavor to um, get through them, hopefully every week, until I run out, and then I'll be begging for stuff. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. If you want to discuss it, um, as always, links are down below, the forum links down below, all that sort of stuff. If you like mailbag, give it a thumbs up. Um, and yeah, that's it. I'm going to go edit this video now. Yay me. Catch you next time.